We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Now city kids gather round for other men's Hush now city kids When it came to me after so long I didn't have no choices Choices in the streets where I was from When I think about the pain I didn't have no choices Choices I took what I had sworn Hush now, city kids, gather round for Robin Mets. Hush now, city kids. Good evening, welcome to Geordie's here. Geordie's there on NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Uh, welcome to Mitch, to George, to Kevin, to Stu, and to Albert and to you uh, for uh, an hour of, uh, well, a post-mortem maybe after uh, last night's result. Um, are we going to try and find someone who's upbeat on the panel uh, among, amongst all the misery that I'm seeing on social media? Well, we'll wait and see. So, Mitch, um, Newcastle travelled to Stamford Bridge. Um, in the build-up, we said it wasn't a happy hunting ground. It continues not to be a happy hunting ground. Um, and, yeah, I think the most disappointing thing, Mitch, was the, the fact that, you know, that was a game there that we could have won. You know, Chelsea were no great shakes. They've spent... Uh, you know, a billion pounds or more on, on you know, assembling a side which has misfired for the last couple of years. So, from my perspective, so disappointing, you know. Um, some plus points, Tino looked great last night. Um, two wonderful strikes from uh, uh, Murphy and from Isaac. But but other than that, I was struggling to find positives in, in last night's performance. And yeah, yeah, a defeat, a defeat which doesn't end our European you know, aspirations, but at the same time, it's, you know, it, it's, it's you know, it just adds to the doom and gloom again, you know, we, we thought we'd turned a corner and I love what Biffa put on NUFC.com this morning, he said, the Wolves game, we felt as if we turned a corner, it turns out it was a cul-de-sac leading to Stamford, to, to Stamford Bridge and I think that, that probably sums it up, but you know, ups and downs of being a Newcastle fan, Mitch. We know that game where our feelings and inadequacies were more to blame for the end result than anything else, than facing a team that played in a stellar fashion, that we you know, or facing a team that had somebody who was really um, outstanding on the day. Reading the press today about uh, raving about Cole Palmer, I'm sorry, he was bang average, and that was all he had to be. Mm -hmm. That was all he had to be. Um, I described the Mackhams uh, game at the weekend as them looking like a team that's schizophrenic. I think we are as well. Where was that team that turned out on Saturday? Uh, uh, sorry, that turned out against against Wolves. You know, we absolutely right about feeling that would turn the corner, and we didn't even show half of the intelligence on the football pitch that we did against Wolves. Um, we were shy again at the back in terms of pace. Um, I don't know, Botman seems to have dropped off a cliff in terms of um, performance level. Um, midfield looked pedestrian and single paced again. Um, and the usual sort of bright sparks just weren't sparking enough. Isaac took his goal very well, as did Murphy. 
and once again we're scoring two goals away from home and not getting any not even getting a single point and that's ridiculous um and i know i've seen stats saying like for example uh, <clears throat> uh how many goals were conceded with and without pope but surely it's it, it's something much deeper than just missing a goalkeeper it's absolutely ridiculous uh and unacceptable and again the word i've used too many times this season unacceptable and and i think we're as a fan base are right to ask questions yet again um but at the same time, again, we're having a direct comparison to the Wolves game makes it even more frustrating because we, we could have taken Chelsea. There's no doubt about that. And I think anybody with half a football and brain should have been able to see that. Uh, we made made our own problems for ourselves and we got exactly what we deserved out of it because of it. OK, George, we'll come to you. I'm not sure whether you're getting a couple of text messages there or something, George. So I'll come to you. I had to mute you because I, I think it was I think it was your phone going off. But um, if you're with us, no, George, right. give, us your view, give us your views on uh, last night's game. Yeah. Well, it was, it was <laughs> as Neil says, I'm, I'm just trying to switch the bloody thing off. That's what I'm doing. Right, that's it. I'm on, I'm on silent. That's it. Um, yeah. Um. Neil said it. I, I I said before the match, if the team that turned up played for Wool against Wolves on Saturday turned up yes last night, would nothing to fear. Well, not one of them. Well, I'll excuse Tino. He's the only one that that did anything that looked like anywhere near what he did on uh, at the weekend. The rest were hopeless and um, mystery. Is is Botman fit or is he not fit? I mean, what what's the matter? He, he, he just isn't there. He isn't there at the moment. Where before, he was the best central defender in the Premiership, and uh, at the moment, he's he's just not. He's just not there at all. And uh, it it's it's uh, it's more. It's it's it, there's a there's desire missing. Never mind pace. The pace is bad enough, but but the it, the desire seems to have disappeared as well for some reason, and. That, that that's that's got to be something for me in the dressing room because it, it went through the whole team. It was awful. It was awful, and uh, um, Sean Longstaff. Um, somebody saying that the time he had a rest. Yeah, it is the time he had a rest. I mean, he was just non-existent last night, non-existent. But he wasn't alone. There were others as well. And then uh, you know it, 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 we get a great goal from Isaac, the sort of thing that should pep you up and, and get you going. And um, it didn't. We just fell flat again, and, and that was that was so so disappointing. And uh, Chelsea were there for the taking, as far as I was concerned. Absolutely there for the taking. Um, there was uh, very little in that team I would be bothered about coming into our team or the team that played against Wolves on Saturday. But the team that played last night, I just didn't recognise it at all, which is which is very worrying. Um, it's uh, it's bad enough when, um, you know, a team plays bad and you can see, see there's a there's a there's a there's a system gone wrong or it's been there a while. But this is uh, schizophrenic. Neil's used the word schizophrenic. It was. You look at the goals game at the weekend and then look at that one last night and you, you can't imagine it's the same team. You just can't imagine it's the same team. They're just absolutely awful. And uh, um, the, there's, uh, there's some work to be done, on, not just on the training ground. I think there's some work to be done in the dressing room for me. Because the, the, there's, there's something there's something quite wrong. Um, yes, I, I think there, there is a there's a, there is an argument that they're missing hope, but uh, Pope rather. Uh, rather. Um, but really, to that extent, no, I agree with Neil. It, it, it's uh, may, maybe it's for a little bit, but that that back five that was the best back five in the country last year have suddenly become one of the easiest to get through, uh, uh, and that's. Uh, that's got to be. There's got to be answers in, in the dressing room or on the train pitch for that. And uh, as I said, um, uh, Botman's just a shadow of his former self. 
And uh, uh, as I say, young young Tino was the only one that did anything that uh, that, that uh, looked real, looked like he, he looked like a real replacement for Trippier last night. I thought he worked his socks off for no no reward at all. Um, was it was it me or was Tino being targeted last night as well? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yes, yes, he was. He was. Yes, yes, he was. He was being targeted, and. Uh, um, now I suspect that's uh, from their dressing room. Yes, um, they, they they think that they, they could have wound him up or something. But uh, no, he, he was they were having a go at him deliberately. But he he wrote it all. I thought he he was magnificent. Um, and the other danger is, of course, is the having young players in the in the mix at the moment, like uh, Lewis Miley. Um, being in that sort of schizophrenic atmosphere where one week you're at the top, next week you're at the bottom, ain't good for your development. It's not good for your development at all. And uh, that, that was something else that worried me. So, no, it, it, a depressing night, um, just unbelievably so uh, depressing. Um, couldn't believe uh, how easy we were to go through, how easy, easy it was to break with down, how easy it was to to hit the back of our net and that that's that's never been us last year and, and uh for a good bit of this year but even just go to to wolves on saturday as i keep saying if the same team had been out and played the same as they did on saturday that would have been a different game last night but they didn't and there's got to be a reason for that it, it can't be just about going away from home if it is, we're in serious bloody trouble again, you know. But uh, no, nah, there's got to be uh, there's got to be some uh, serious uh, work done in the dressing room and 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 on the training pitch after last night. Kev, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> Conceding after six minutes. Um, essentially, the first goal was pivotal in the game, and. I, well, I wouldn't say thankfully again. I had to go to work, so I only watched the 40, first 45 and I had to listen on the good old radio on the way to work whilst, you know, another sloppy goal goes in from what was said. But anyway, but, uh, you know, like Mitch and um, George have said, and I've said this for a while, it, it looks like there's zero con uh, cohesiveness, disjointed, lack of endeavour, um, no creative spark. Um just going through the motions and is it like I said uh, last night is it like down tools and flip-flops on and let's get to the summer and we'll see what happens in the summer is that the mentality now in the dressing room George said is there something going on um for me it's it goes it, it, it always goes to the, the the top person in that dressing room and that's the head coach and that goes to Eddie Howe and I, again I'm not the out camp I'm not but again, that, that has to be evaluated in somehow. Because if you have a game plan, who knows what that was last night? Because again, it looked disjointed. It looked, who knows what it was? But if you go with a game plan to, to sort of kind of sort of counterattack, but kind of sort of have a high press, then there's a obvious confusion of what's happening. But that comes from him. So it, now are the players having a lack of trust of going out? Not saying he's lost the dressing room. I'm just saying, do they trust him enough now? Can we go to Chelsea and say, hey, like Mitch, you're playing left back, Stu, you're up front just because you can knock somebody about and, and say, I'll give you your jobs and whatever. And can you go and execute those rules and responsibilities? And I don't think the players actually trust. So if I said this to Mitch, just knock it down the line, play inside, do whatever. Stu, just go and elbow somebody, two foot somebody, do your job. I don't think they're, they're trusting what's being put across anymore. I think it's, I think that's how deep it goes. Um, so anyway, that's just my opinion on that side of it. Again, it's it, it, instead of, you know, schizophrenia, now we're looking at insanity because you're doing the same thing over and over again and it's the same results coming out, you know, so you, it, it, it's paralleled. Um, the first goal for me was a, a disgraceful defending. Um, if you look at it from my perspective, um, when the ball comes in, I think Martin Dubravka needs to absolutely scream at Sven Botman again and claim that ball versus Sven Botman clearing it. Okay, the second phase, Botman cleared it, poor clearance. What was the press like? Everybody just stood on the six-yard box, penalty spot, and just stood there. 
I mean, my missus could have scored that, you know, uh, from, but there was no press. There was no reaction to the ball that, because I, in my world, what I say, and I break it down, what's the danger in the game? I don't care about movement of players. I don't care about whatever. The danger in the game is the ball because that's what you score with. That's how dumbed down I have to go. But, you know, so when the ball gets pushed out of the eight in your box, there was no reaction. There was zero reaction. There was zero desire to put your body on the line like we did last year to stop a ball going into the back of your net. That's denying the shot, denying the attacks, and, and, and nullifying their attack. Um, so outside of that, I mean, the exact goal, like Mitch said, was a brilliant finish. Um, you know, and then we're going to off time one one. Then, in for me, it would be at half time team talk. Let's let's go get after him. Let let's go for it. Let you know, we've got them on the back foot. We're one one. We've just scored before half time. You know, they they were. They were poor best. We were even worse. I mean, it was dross. It was it was an awful watch. Um, I think we give Chelsea too much respect. Um, let them have the ball. There was no press in the midfield. With Endo, Endo, uh, Fernandez looked a world beater. Cole Palmer, I didn't. I mean, they floated around. Colin Gallagher apparently had had the flu pretty much, and he looked like he floated around and he played. He, he was never ever ever ill, you know. But we give them too much time and space. We give them we did we give them too much respect. Get in the face, like I said last night. If you have the intention of playing a high pressing game and a gang gang and press, you have to press all over the field. In twos and threes, if you lose the ball like Liverpool against Man City, they were all over them like a bad rush. You have to be and you you stamp your attention on the game early, and we didn't. And that's the most frustrating thing about where we are now. We're like hesitant to press. We're hesitant to do this. We're hesitant, hesitant to do whatever's been told to them. Because I think, again, like my original point, I think there's a lack of trust of what's been said and outlaid from from a coaching perspective yeah, and a yeah, yeah. and a and a, um, a, a tactical perspective. Um, and again, you know, I think that, like Georgie said, it has to be looked at. And we'll talk. I can talk about pediatrization and recovery times and injuries. Don't care. Mitch can tell you about the NFL. Neck, what the phrase is next person up. If you get an injury, the next player is standing right on the side there and the next person's up. It doesn't matter how many you could have 20 players, you still got to go and win a game. And that's down to the head coach, the coordinators over here in the NFL. But in, in our world, in the football world, is your assistant coaches, your Graham Jones, what he's doing, what his influence is, what's the set plays looking like? Because they were mundane at best because why did we play it at the edge of the box and go all the way back the goalkeeper pretty much on a, in a corner? Why didn't we just chuck it in there and have outbeat, outdo them from height? That's why we played Dan Burn because he's got height and Sven Bottom's got height. So it was just very, it was weird. It was odd. And it's getting a bit boring, essentially. You know what we're going to do. Yeah. And it's just all going to yeah. break down. And so I think, again, not changing the gaffer, but I think, again, a change of mentality and an approach that might have to take place. Harsh words and some would say fair words from Kev on, on last night's performance, Stu. Um, well, it wasn't a 3-1, it was a 3-2. Uh, it wasn't it was no penman last night, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's been worse days and been been a lot worse days than than last night. But I, I don't know. I, maybe it's just the fact that it comes it comes when people felt the corner had been turned, when players were coming back, and then we we'll get another injury. You know, Anthony Gordon goes off, still no diagnosis. You know, as to to exactly where we're at with that situation. Nothing official yet, but didn't look good. Harvey Barnes, missing last night, injured now and out until after the international break. So we're not getting we're not getting a break in those injuries either. But yeah, give us give us your take on the uh, on the game last night. Well before I go on to the take, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. It's important that we do look at a positive. Uh, and I think the performance of Livermento, he was outstanding. 
and some of the more senior players should hang their heads in shame with the effort he put in, his willingness. Um, he, they should be embarrassed by the, the way he played and the, they just allowed him to do it. He was up and down that wing. He, he showed what a proper wing back should do. Uh, and he's, he's definitely part of our future. Uh, the second thing I was going to mention before I start dissecting the game was probably the most amateurish moment I've seen in a long, long time was how the physio tended to Anthony Gordon's leg. The way he just yanked it like that, you could see him screaming in pain. He was telling them before he even got there that there's pain, there's pain here, it's sore, it's <clears throat> knees, the ligaments, whatever, and he just yanked it. Now, it might have been something that could have been sprayed and he might have hobbled on, etc., etc. But for me, that, that's that's got to put him out to question whether he play again this season. So that's his Euros out the way, if, if that's the case. I mean, I think but, collectively, Stu, I 100% agree with you. I, di I didn't want you to lose your track on this and go off. I agree. I, I, I mean, I winced at that. I, 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 I'm not a, I'm not a physio, yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm just a football fan no. who watches stuff. And I've played football myself. Um, and, and even in good old Sunday football, Stu, I would never have expected my guy who used to run over the bucket in the magic sponge to yank somebody's knee like that. I, I, I Job's got to be in trouble for something like that once they look at it. it. It really was. It was so amateurish. It, it was just, just, just terrible. Mm. It was shocking. But if I uh, get back on uh, not being positive, I'd rather be more realistic. And then for me, when there's, there's players there, and we should name them because they've been consistently indifferent, if I'm being kind, for most of this season, and that's Burn, Miggy and Longstaff. There should be nowhere near our starting eleven come next season, and they have to show no sentiment. Uh, I think they're a group of certain players, not just those three others who peaked last season, and they're not going to get better. They're not going to play as well as they did last season. They are regressing. So, in layman's terms, we need a summer, a big summer clear out and cash in as much as we can for what we don't want to keep. Uh, thanks for your service. Best of luck, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And. Cutting as it may sound, I think Eddie Howe knows this and he's just trying to keep the squad together um, up until the rest of the season. Now, you've got players like Bruno. He sees the game in slow motion. Look at the pass he made for Isaac. And he needs players. He sees the bigger picture. He needs players of equal ability or as close to his ability as we can to, to make him look even better. But when you get people just stand watching, wondering what he's going to do, we need players who are anticipating what he's going to do. And... Yes, yeah, I, I noticed it. Uh, I know I said in our group, Tiro Livramento, he had four or five occasions, even in the first half alone, where he could have passed it to Miggy and he chose not to. It's as if he didn't have enough belief in him that the, the ball was going to be advanced more or was going to be more beneficial to the team. Bruno was the same with the long stuff. And we, 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 I don't want to go over the top with it, but it's it's not a one off. It's the, it's, been happening too consistently for this year. It's it's just a one-off. It's not the end of the world, but what it does show is how threadbare our squad is. Without Gordon, without Barnes, yet we. I tell you what, if is we need to whatever come hell or high water, keep Isaac fit to the rest of the season, because if not, the wheels can come off. But if we can keep him fit and Barnes can get back quicker, and the. Physio didn't do such a bad job with uh, Anthony Gordon and he gets back. We will be playing teams who really do have nothing to play for and, and we can finish the season with, with a rattle, but it's, it's keeping the Isaac fit is a, is a real, real issue for us and it's something that we've got to do. Um, what we need is Bruno to get some sleep. Uh, and I'm just concerned that the, the blue chip players will look and think, do I want to waste another season of my career? And when I'm seeing blue chip players at the moment, we've got two on the pitch. If you're not, if you're discounting Livermento with them being younger, and that's Bruno and Isaac, are they wanting to stay with a squad that's just treading water? And, and this is where the, the tough decisions have to be made. And for me, we'll go to Man City on Saturday. It's It could be ideal because no one expects us to get anything. But the Longstaffs, the Burns, the Botmans, 
Popman as well, and I've been one of his biggest fans since he joined. The need rested or dropped, whichever way you've rotated, whichever way you want to dress it up. Because the, the two slow, the two stagnant, they're not doing anything where you could put Target back in. He's got more pace. You, you can have even put Miley in, but Anderson, give him the minutes. There's, there's changes that can be made. Lascelles will relish the, the battle against uh, Holland, and then Shaw can sweep, sweep up with uh, Alvarez. There's so much that can be changed to at least go there and, and give, give us a fist of it. Because from what they performed last night, they, they should be ashamed of themselves. And they, we got ourselves all excited after we, the way we beat Wolves, thinking, right, we're on the up now. But I tell you what, when they go training, I think they must go in cars and knock black cats over or walk under ladders or something because we, the, the look just gets worse and worse when it comes <laughs> to the injury. You know, we, we just seem to get ourselves right back on and things were getting back to where we wanted to be. Um, and, and then you see Gordon getting injured like that. Bonds picks up a minor strain, hopefully. But we've got after the Man City game, there's an international break, isn't there? So it's time for people to get back and they, they just need to go to this game on Saturday and, and play with no fear because that Chelsea team is average. And it shows how far we have come in such a, such, such a short space of time when we're angry and frustrated at losing 3-2 to Chelsea. But they are an average team. And league-wise, we're an average team at the moment, but we know we're capable of so much more. And we should have performed better last night, and, and they didn't. And that's the thing. It's not getting beat. We've got beat for years and years and years watching the team. It's the manner of the defeat. And it was the... The, the lack of willingness to, to do the yards. Now, from what I could hear, the supporters were outstanding last night and, and they're putting the miles in, they're putting the shift in, just need the same on the pitch. And I think Eddie Howe would have felt let down last night, but he's not the right type of manager to come out and stay at the team publicly. I hope he's, hopefully he's done it privately. OK, Al Walid, what was your views of uh, Newcastle's trip to Stamford Bridge last night and the 3-2 defeat? Um, well, uh, you lads uh, summarized it very well, uh, especially Kevin. Uh, he said it uh, exactly what I'd, I'd like to say. I, but I may I may add that if I'm talking to the uh, about the players, uh, I felt kind that they are not have something to look for in the in the in the Premier League this season. They don't have like uh, they, you know it's very difficult to have a European seat. Uh, maybe also they thinking about the FA Cup. Uh, for managerial thing, uh, uh, Eddie Howe, ha he have great plan A, uh, but un unfortunately he doesn't still had uh, doesn't have enough squad to keep uh, winning every game. Uh, Chelsea have I, I believe yesterday uh, maybe just more skillful uh, skillful uh, individuals more than Newcastle. Uh, the plan B. Uh, you're talking about the the defense. They they look bad, but I believe it's also uh, conflict with 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 the, with the middle field midfield. Uh, longest staff, and sorry to say that longest staff or Miley, they are not enough for facing such like uh, Enzo, Casido. They they are much more, better player defensively. So um, I think I, I hope I hope in the summer we fix all this uh, issue. Uh, I'm not and even if we won yesterday, it's it's not uh, any. If we won yesterday, it doesn't mean that we 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 still have problem to fix. So this season, it's just I think just uh, uh, I'm hoping to focus uh, as well as you said, Steve. We may take surprise. We take surprise uh, Manchester City. Oh, sorry, Benman says that. Uh, that we can, we are not uh, uh, candidate, so maybe we can uh, get to quarter final since a very long time. Uh, just, uh, I hope, I hope we fix all this issue in the summer, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, confident this is will happen. And uh, after this, Dan Ashworth and uh, Andy Howe, they, they fix the, the situation for the bringing the players. Uh, so I'm just looking for, looking more for the. Uh, the FA Cup and the, and the summer uh, trans transfers. Okay, good stuff, lads. Halfway through the show, time for the ads. 
A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, Handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morbeth and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from Ticketmaster. .co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website tynetheatreandoperahouse.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the North East Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9am on DAB Smart speakers and the tuneuk.com. And don't forget the end of season due, 20th of July. Tickets are a tenner and money going towards dementia matters. Uh, Ask George, Supermat and Gibbo and the Long Sands are your entertainment. And uh, an evening with Peter Beardsley. Tickets are available now on Woucher, uh, 2nd of June at the Tyneside Irish Centre as well. Okay, lots of comments coming in, lots of negativity. Uh, towards Eddie Howe, some from a couple of regulars in the chat, some from uh, a few new faces. King Murphy says, Eddie's time is up, one-dimensional, can't change a game, very questionable subs, it's been like this for too long. Your nightmare has been very active tonight, time for how to leave the club. I am absolutely sick of him, I'd replace him tomorrow. Um, who is current uh, with Hansi Flick, who is currently available? How's not good enough? He thinks he's managing Bournemouth. Um, lots of people criticising his tactics, uh, Mark Byers, I've always been how in because he wasn't backed enough in the windows, but insistence on some strange decisions like giving Longstaff 90 minutes when he was the worst on the park is turning me. Lots of stuff like that uh, tonight, Mitch, uh, from, from some of the regulars in the chat, it has to be said, one or two uh, people who are uh, seemingly new to the channel. Um, I mean, this is the problem when you're the manager. You're going to get it in the neck when things don't go right. Um People people are quick to praise you, but when when people aren't happy, they they're gonna have a they're gonna have a pop, aren't they? And that's why it's a tough job. Mm. And that's why people have got to be big enough to take all of that on the chin and push through the tough times to then hopefully bask in the glory of the good times. Um, I think as a fan base, it's very difficult because again you get degrees of overreaction still. And again, I'll, I'll say this once again, you can be critical of what's going on and some of his current decisions without necessarily being how out. Um, however, this particular run of form has gone on long enough um, that the, the rope that he's been given, the length of it is getting shorter and shorter because... Yes, injuries have had an impact and suspensions. Of course they have. We all know that. We're not daft. Um, but that 
doesn't explain a back five that was the best in the Premier League by a country mile suddenly becoming the worst in the Premier League in a four month period. Um, we shouldn't be scoring three, two, three and four goals in games to come away with no points or a point. That's by any metric you want to look at it, <clears throat> totally unacceptable. And that's not being ungrateful. That's not being difficult. What that is, is a winning mentality. And it's one of the things we as a fan base need to understand that we have a, a right to get to a point where being mediocre isn't acceptable. Mediocre was all we could hope for under Mike Ashley. That was the height of our aspirations was mediocrity. Um, we know we're better than that. We know we can be better than that because we've got the evidence in terms of league position last year, in terms of form and in terms of results. So I think um, what does need to happen, and this is up to the owners and, and the people in high places, is a root and branch deconstruction of this season to understand where it's gone wrong and to make sure it doesn't happen again. We have a, a chairman who was on record on a television programme telling the world he won't stop till we're number one. Um, and the only thing we're number one in at the minute is goals conceded. And that's not what he meant, I'm quite sure. And, and so we're not being impatient, we're not being ungrateful, we're not being um, difficult if we're asking questions about what's going on. Quite the opposite, it's because we care and we want to see everything going better. And I think as long as people within the club and anyhow included understand fully where it's gone wrong and are putting things in place to make sure it doesn't happen again, that's great. Um, but we are allowed as a fan base to turn around and say mediocre isn't the height of our ambitions and we are allowed to be unhappy about that. So for me, I'll tell you where I stand, Mitch. Eddie Howe deserves to start next season as manager. Yeah. That's where I stand. I think he's got enough credit in the bank. Um, I think he needs an opportunity to start next season. And I can see that some people will say, from their perspective, they could do that. We could get off to a horrendous start. I've seen somebody say it in the chat. Um, we could be in a horrendous place by Christmas and it's screwing another season up. But for me... For what Eddie Howe's done with his football club in the first two years, you know, that he's been here, um, I do think he, he deserves an opportunity. Um, so that's where I stand. Are you the same? Sorry, is that me? I know, Mitch. Are you this are you the same, Mitch? Would you keep would you keep out? Yeah, I do, I, the, the most important point you made there, Steve, is he's got the credit in the bank. Yeah. What he did to that squad when we were rock bottom and destined for relegation. Yeah. Um, then getting that same squad with a few additions into the Champions League positions is more than enough credit in the bank to say, well, look, the evidence on the, the, the balance of things is this can be turned around. Yeah. Um, and, he, and I think he's, he's deserves a chance to. Okay, George, um, you've heard what me and Mitch have said. Um, what's your feelings on, on Eddie Howe's position at the moment? And would you agree that he's, you know, he deserves the opportunity to start as Newcastle United manager next year? Because there is already a momentum building. Should Newcastle crash out of the FA Cup against Man City at the weekend? You know, we've then got West Ham at home. Um, you know, then on the horizon, we've got some some big games. We've got Everton who are battling relegation, but then we've got Spurs and Manchester United. So, you know, we've seen Newcastle go out of the frying pan into the fire on numerous occasions in the last two years and, and come out smelling the roses. But um, 
yeah, what, what's your take on, on the Eddie Howe out campaign that seems to be building a little bit of momentum well, on social media? It's not surprising uh, uh, because of the disappointment people mm. will feel after last year. Um, from a personal point of view, it's a question that will answer itself. If it doesn't get answered on the field, we'll not have to think about where he's going because it'll be gone. <laughs> it's as simple as that. If he doesn't pull things around by by the end of the season and we, we get get something like a reasonable place uh, in the league, um, then I, I don't think it's a question we'll have to ask because I, I can't see the owners accepting something which is uh, second rate. And uh, after last night, that that's where we would be. We would be very second rate. So... Um, from a personal point of view, yes, he's got the credit because of what he's doing. I mean, I think of uh, the number of players who were non-starters under Bruce and so suddenly become uh, world beaters under under Eddie Howe, uh, including Joe Linton and others. Um, it's just an, an amazing turnaround. Um, but uh, how we perform towards the end of the season will answer the question for me, Steve. If if we end up below the middle, I think he'll be gone. Is is uh, is my view, uh, whether we like it or not, because uh, um, our owners have a right to expect something different. Our fans have the right to expect something different. Uh, and uh, last night wasn't acceptable by any standards, by anybody, by fans. By I mean, the fans last night demonstrated yet again how wonderful they are the, the group that, that travel away i mean you can't can't believe the team that was uh losing like they were last night and looking awful and yet the fans out shouting the home fans just unbelievable but uh that that's all right for a while but uh if if we if we slip much more i i, I can see that uh turning slightly nasty as well because uh um, it's just not acceptable. So I think the, the question is for me personally. Yes, he's got he's he's got the credit in the bank to stay where he is for another season at least. Um, but if we fall so far, um, it's not even a question that will be answered because I think he'll be gone. I think he would be gone. Okay, Kev. Before I ask you about Eddie Howe, I know you were patiently wanting to just comment on the uh, the Anthony Gordon situation that we talked about. You you didn't get a chance to to talk about that. Just the the physio's response to him lying on the ground in agony and and then writhing his leg around. Which again, none of us are medical experts in that field. Um. So you know, what what was your well? I'm not saying I am, but I know in terms of injury and. Physio running on and whatever. Yes, it could have been. It could have been when he pulled up earlier in the half. In the half, it, it could have happened then. But as a physio running on, you have to manip palpate, manipulate, get a range of motion of the rigors of the you know feeling of what's going on within that within the knee. Yes, it could have been. Um, a major injury, but he, the, the physio has to actually feel and get a range of motion or, 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 or get an opinion right there and then of what's actually happened. Yes, he could look screaming out of pain. Yes, so therefore he's moved his knee or whatever. And then he has, but the, the physio and the doctor, team doctor, whoever was on the field, has to have an initial response um and that's just my opinion uh, i mean if if the initial injury happened earlier he wouldn't have carried on um he got another knock yes then he's laid, laid on his back but again the physio again it, you know reflexology all the above you have to part you have to move range of motion things like that to sort of of the structure of the knee and is he going to withstand this pressure from all the the ACL, the MCL, all the above, you know, he has to understand, they, the, the, the the physio team have to fi really figure out what's actually going on within that structure of the knee and mm -hmm. whether he can withstand what, uh, you know, getting up on his feet, can he move, wh what. So they have to do that within X minutes, you know, or less. To figure out what's going on um now look obviously we understand that and i've read today that it's not as bad as first thought 
mm. you know, granted, Con- because, conflicting uh, conflicting reports uh, coming right. out from just, just from what I've seen, you know. But again, that's conjecture. That's just the medical opinions. And look again, I'm not a, I'm not a physiotherapist. I'm a sports scientist, so it's different. So again, they again they have to manipulate. They have to make sure you can withstand pressure. Make sure you can withstand movements. Mm-hmm. And so that's what that probably looked like. It probably looked worse than probably what it was in in terms of what they had to do. Yeah. Yes, it might have could have put yeah. them in a different position, a different realm of pain, if you will. I mean, I've I've had a spiral fracture, my tibia fibia, and I and I, and the, the you know like the the Sunday morning analogy with a magic sponge, and my ankle blew up. Like no, you can run on, you can you can run it off. No, I've got it. No, I no. As a player, like I said last night, you 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 know your body better than anybody. You know what's going on. But as a as a high level, hopefully a high level physiotherapist or high level doctor, you then know once that occurs of the yelp of a scream or a, a, a initial like a lot of pain, then. They make that decision, and like we said with Isaac, they'll go down and they'll just Im- immediately remove him. Andy Gordon's not that type of mentality of a player where he wants to just walk off the field and, you know, like give in and say, "I'm in this ex- excruciating pain," but he's probably in excruciating pain, so it's probably more of a not impact, but it's a, it's a twist, it's a nigger, it's a turn, it's something what he, he it's probably more uncomfortable. More than anything, not that I've done yeah. my knee, but I've done my ankle. So I'm just saying they have to do their job. Yes, it might look different to what others might do, but they have to again do their job in terms of range the, of motion. The one thing you're right like on their 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 is from a medical point of view, when you've got a patient with pain, mm. sometimes palpation and seeing the reaction can tell you what it is. Right, and that's what I'm saying, but they have to do that. The the classic, does it hurt when I press there? (laughs) And and, and if the patient jumps out the chair, yeah, it does. Yeah, exactly. So you're right in terms of sometimes it may look look a little more violent than perhaps it actually in reality is. Um, Mm. If we've unfortunately caught the the reaction, because that reaction may be telling the physio everything he needs to know. Yeah, it's just been shown again on TV. I'd only seen seen it once, and I've just seen it again there. And it's just, I think maybe what really affected everybody at home was the reaction of Gordon. And I think everybody's, you know, we all, none of us are used to seeing that. We're used to seeing them being treated with kid gloves. And to see them push the knee up and then go, ah, like that, don't do that. You know, yeah, I think that's probably like what Like said, you have to really get to that point of extremes. That yeah. Mm. yeah, that's you've what I'm saying. You've got to get to the extreme. You might, they just don't know what, it, they could have done damage. You just don't know. But again, within the knee structure, it's quite complex. So that's... there's a lot of things, you know. Mm. So anyway, yeah. Okay, Kev, well, listen. Uh... Bang on about, sorry, Steve. The one thing Kev was bang on about there is the physio, although he's there to medically treat them, they should know the players. And yeah. Gordon's not the type of player to, to fear an injury. Right. Uh, so it, it's quite simple that he's he was in pain. He told him before he even did it. Yes, he might want to gauge the amount of pain he was in. Yeah. But to, to thrust it the way he did. So I'm sorry, I, I don't think that's acceptable. Yeah, it's it's that's, I think it's just the reaction. It, it is the reaction. No, I, I think we'll, I've got it. We'll, yeah, I just wanna, I've got, I just it, wanna, I've got to be I, with Stu on there. Yeah. Sorry. You, carry on. Steve. You're slightly, you're slightly, you're slightly delayed, George. That's all. So yeah, when you're when you're coming in to make a point, it's it's slightly delayed. But don't worry about it. Um. Okay. Yeah, Kev. Just want to ask you about Eddie Howe. Um. <clears throat> we we all seem to be very supportive on here. Um. Most yeah. people in the chat are saying he's he's built up the credit. What what's your what's your thoughts? Are you are you, yeah, more, totally are you more on the other I mean, side? No, I uh, he gal- galvanized the club. When he took over and gave us a new lease of life and a way of playing football that we've not never seen before, but a different way what we've what we haven't seen. And so, I think again, like what Mitch said, his ropes getting shorter and shorter. 
Um, but unfortunately, football's a business and results determine decisions that are made at a higher level. And alluding to what George said, you know, they they could just at the end of the season to say, no, we're done. After two years, you've done what you could do. Thanks very much. Again, we'll, you know, I love Eddie Howe. I, I think he's a brilliant coach in terms of what he's done with the players that he's had available to him. Um, so I can see the summer being a big one. I can see hopefully that he can get a new, a new influx of players to the, the ones that he actually wants to be involved be involved in his way of playing but i can see given what january next ne the the january window where we are there i think then that's when we're going to see decisions being made of actually where we are based off of the summer if we would get an influx of a large amount of players of high quality players and it's still the same then then you've got to look at eddie howe and say well it hasn't worked. Thank you, but it hasn't worked. We'll give you what you wanted. But unfortunately, we need to move in a, in a different direction. It, which is sad to say because, I, you, you know, uh, if he gets a, a high-level player, I think he can coach them into probably even better players. But again, it just depends on the spend and what we can and cannot do. That That's the big, big question mark over the whole thing going forward. You know, so we'll just see what happens. But I can see him staying up until maybe January next year in the January transfer window or January this year, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I hope he stays and I hope he actually hits the, the rubber, hits the road and he'll push on and take us to where we were last year and, and beyond. OK, shoot. Eddie Howe. I really want Eddie Howe to succeed, and I firmly and truly believe that he can succeed. I think next season will be his litmus test. The owners will not, or will they will not accept failure or more failure because they'll see the season as a failure, irrespective of the injuries and everything else that we've trotted out as excuses. Uh, I, I think it's from now. It's, it's how we finish the season. Do we just let it fade away or do we go down fighting or do we actually get back on the saddle and, and get up to a position where we are in Europe, which is going to be so important for the brand to attract the type of players that we're looking to attract. Uh, it, it gives us more, not just European, but gr uh, global recognition, which is in line with Adidas, etc. Um, and I've also heard, I mean, of course, there's, there's a lot of reactionary things about Eddie Howe, and I'm sure he's learning, but he, he is limited with the options he's got. And has he made the right choice every time? No, he hasn't. But he's made many more right than wrong. So uh, I think it's it's how we finish the season is, is going to be important to him because I think I'll sit down with him at the end of the season and I'll ask them two questions. Question one, what's your vision for next season? Question two, who do we retain from your squad? Like, who are your non-negotiables? And depending on his answer, I think could decide whether they decide to get a new man in or not. And I really hope that it is, anyhow, uh, because I think for the effort he's done and what he's achieved in such a short space of time, I, I really want him to be the manager that lifts the trophy for us. But I've also seen on social medias as well that people are <coughs> intimating that... PAF have lost interest with us. Two words for that, no chance. The question I would ask back, if I could be bothered to write back to everyone who's probably, well, irrespective, I would say is, when have they not backed us financially, when they've had the opportunity to? They've backed us to the limit every single time that they said, right, this is how much you can spend, there's your money. So I've got no doubt that the owners will continue to back us uh, but they're not daft enough to keep throwing good money after bad. So for Eddie Howe's future, the next few months or the end of this, to the end of the season is going to be critical for him, but not for us as a club. Because the, uh, I've got a message of someone just before there. If you give us a second to read it out, Stephen. Uh, someone who watches the show a lot, but I won't name them. 
uh, a spend of 150 to 250 million guaranteed on new players. Tenali will be back. Joe Linton, etc., will be fit. At least five or six dead uh, will be out uh, at the end of the contract. We'll have new sponsorship coming in from the Lakes of Adidas. New super, super store gun under the under construction at the stadium by Adidas. We are now classed as one of the elite clubs worldwide. Champions League money coming in. More money from Seller. More money from Noon. More uh, sponsorship partners. And new stadium expansion of plans will be released. The feasibility study will be near its conclusion. And it's the consultants who I mentioned at SSK who designed Tottenham Stadium. There's going to be the fan zone that we talked about last week. We'll have 1,500 to 2,000 places available. There's so much going the right way. But for us as supporters, you know, sometimes we'll watch it. Well, we have done in the past, watch them in cow sheds as long as they're winning. And, and that's that's the most important thing. And that's what Eddie Howe needs to be focused on is somehow galvanise that team and get them back to what they could be. But the, the only fear I've got, as I said earlier, I think some players will never reach the heights that they reached last season. And he's maybe been a bit too loyal to certain players. Uh, and this is where he has to show his mettle as a manager, as a manager and be shown he's not scared to make the tough decisions. And that's how he'll keep his job. OK, Alwaleed, the final word comes to you tonight. Eddie Howe, um, how would you feel if uh, Eddie Howe started next season as Newcastle manager? Would you be happy? It's, uh, it looks like a clean sweep if you are, but uh, don't be afraid if you if you think it would be best to change to say so. Uh, no, the, not at all. He should stay. Uh, just uh, We need to level up the players we're bringing in the summer. I'm not really sure about the... Budget, but I believe we have enough budget to bring for at least four 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 positions. Uh, he he need a squad. When Newcastle full squad, uh, we beat almost everybody. And uh, as you said, lads, uh, credit in the bank. Uh, uh, I'm not worried about it. How just I'm worried that we need the players. We noticed that. Uh, I forgot to say about Julinton. Julinton, and he was a mist. Uh, in the middle field, so he exposed that we have weak, weak midfield, uh, weak uh, defense line. With uh, we miss uh, strengthening and physicality of uh, Julian. So if we have more players, uh, I think this will uh, become uh, different for Newcastle because we need more squad. This is this is really important. So we have multiple choice of picking the players. Uh, but just if I may add about uh, injury of. Uh, uh, Gordon, uh, this is what the, this is uh, sometimes the, phys the physical therapist become uh, under pressure. You want to put the, the player quickly in the game, but uh, in that kind of situation, uh, players uh, uh, react differently on the injuries. Some, some sometimes they are uh, very panicking. So it's, the, the proper action should be taking out of the field, uh, taking slowly. Uh, Calming the player, uh, trying to uh, make him quiet and uh, start to treat uh, quietly. It doesn't have to be quickly. You will not doing any magic. You will everything. No time. It will be fixed. So uh, this is just my addition. Should be taken out and uh, uh, treat quietly, and you can assist uh, normally after the player calm. And uh, because he is under the shock, some players can't. Uh, not just the players. Any any patient, uh, he uh, sometimes uh, panicking of small things, and sometimes no, they have big injury, and he doesn't uh, uh, really feel. So this is just uh, my add to that. And thank you. <laughs> no, thanks for that, Albert. I'll finish with these two comments. Alistair Legg says, uh, "What Stu has said is so true. We will be massive, and soon." Eddie has to support his current players. He can't call them out. He's not the type of bloke to do that. And he's a boss worth working, uh, worthy working for. And Mark Byers um, loves a bit of humour, Mark. He says, uh, anyway, let's end positively. 
Man City nil, Newcastle four, Dubrovka gets all four, and the doorbell just rang, and the men in the white coat are here to collect me. <laughs> Cheers, Mark. Thanks for that, mate. Um, fantastic stuff, uh, as always. Uh, that's your lot for tonight. That is Jordy's here. Jordy's there. Big thanks to Mitch, to George, to Alwali, to Kevin, to Stu, and to everybody watching. I'm back 2.45 tomorrow. We'll talk with the tune. Until then, have a good night. See you later, lads. Night, everybody. Yes, everyone. Night, everybody. Cheers, lads.